What is up racers, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo Sport. Today we are talking about what view is the best view to use in Gran Turismo Sport. Top left you have cockpit, top right you have hood, bonnet, roof cam, whatever you want to call it. Bottom left obviously you have chase cam and bottom right you have bumper. But first, let me know what view you use in the comments section below. Are you on a controller looking for a more arcade kind of game? Are you on a sim rig and going for immersion? All of these things affect what view we choose. Now, first things first, it's down to personal preference. So yes, some of you might prefer one view over the other, but it doesn't mean that the other person is wrong. So please be civil in the comments section when you're talking about this. Every view offers something different to the game, so it varies what view you're going to choose and what experience you're looking for from the game. If you're looking for immersion, you're probably going to sort of shift towards that cockpit view rather than the chase cam, but we'll talk about that as we go on. So, the first view we are looking at is bumper cam. This is the one that is obviously closest to the ground. And because it's so close to the ground, it gives you a great sense of speed. So for those slower drivers out there, you might want to use this because it might make you feel like you're going faster. Anyway, this is the view that most of the professional drivers, those faster ones in the top split, this is the view that they use most. Some of them do use chase cam, actually, that, you know, baffling to most. Some of them drive with a wheel with chase cam. So, you know, it's not that taboo if you want to be one of those really fast drivers. but most of the fast drivers use this view it's so you can really see how close you are to the other cars so it avoids those little bumps that you may get when you're in chase cam but something else that helps you with your awareness in this view is shadows just as we come into this right hand corner look at the left side of the screen just there a little shadow saying that there is a car on your left just to help you uh, sort of understand what's going on around you when you're so focused on the road in front of you now something that helps you in addition to this is that big old rear view mirror at the top of your screen. This helps you see incoming missiles from the cars behind you. Obviously there's nothing in the rear view mirror right now but hopefully you will see that as we go past this Honda in front of us. Now one of the issues I have with this view is that you don't really know where the front of your car is. So yes, you can use this view to get really close to your opponents and have those really close battles. But if you can't see the front of your car, there's going to be issues and you are going to have those little bumps because you don't really know where your front bumper is. Obviously, you can learn where your front bumper is, but does it differ from car to car? Who knows? I think this view is the easiest view. That's probably why the, you know, the really fast drivers use it is because it gives you so much information. It's the view with the most information, let's say, rear view mirror low down sense of speed, closeness to other cars and to the apexes. It's just a very solid view. Anyway, on to view number two, bonnet, hood, uh, roof cam, depending on where you believe that the cam is actually situated on the car. Can you believe that people will still argue about it to this day? A couple of differences straight from the off. Obviously you see that there is no rear view mirror at the top. So obviously your spatial awareness is being affected by you not knowing what's going on behind you. In addition to this, the radar is no longer situated in the middle of your screen, it's situated over to the right. Now that might sound like a, a little detail, but if it's in the middle, it's easier to look at. And when you're in a battle, in a race, you need those little things to be as easy as possible. And having it in the middle, like it was with the bumper cam, makes it that much easier, simple. The camera is situated a little bit higher than the bumper cam, which gives you a different, a couple of differences to the way that this view feels. You can actually see over cars in front of you. You might be able to see apexes of corners a little bit further away. It is easier to see braking points as well. So on some of these corners, you have those little white boards, the 50, 100, 150 boards, and you use them as braking markers some of you might use cones as well and when you're in bump cam for example and you're close to a car in front of you it's easy to miss those braking markers so maybe in hood cam you are able to see over or around that car in front of you 
giving you a better opportunity to see those braking markers and hit your corners the way you want to. The last thing then is that you can actually see your front bumper which makes it easier to judge how close you are or you need to be to the car in front of you. Easy. That is the hood cam, bonnet cam, roof cam, whatever you want to call it. Not as strong in the information as the bumper cam but still a pretty solid cam. Now moving on to the chase cam just little things first you see that the radar is still in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and that's about it you get the same information on the screen as you do with the hood cam you just have the whole car in front of you now now obviously the main difference is that you can't see the front of your car which makes those little tabs like i did coming into the bus stop just then and that little bit of contact in the hairpin there it makes those little bumps more apparent. They happen more often in the chase cam. Now, once again, it's down to personal preference. Myself, I've always used chase cam growing up playing PlayStation games, whether it was old Colin McRae Rally, or whether it was V Rally, or the old Gran Turismo's. It's always in chase cam. So that's obviously down to personal preference. Now, something you can do on chase cam is that you can actually alter it a little bit and sort of personalize the way you want chase cam to feel you can change the view type from far to near so you can have the car near or far basically and you can change the chase view camera sensitivity and the chase view rotation center offset basically this is just how the camera reacts to the car in front of you so as we go through these corners here it's now very rigid the camera doesn't really move off of the car it's sort of it feels like the camera is focused on the front of the car right now. There's not really any play in it. Now, skipping forward, we're just going to switch it back to... This is what I use whenever I use Chase Cam. I have it a little bit more fluid. So going through these corners, you can see that the car is acting a little bit differently uh, to the camera. It's moving a little bit more. You can see the car turning into the corners more than the car just sort of running around the corner rigidly. Anyway, it's down to personal preference once again. So go, if you do use the chase cam, go, have a little play, tweak it, see what works for you. Actually, when I changed the view uh, so it was more fluid, I actually got faster with it. So if you didn't know, now you know, go have a little play with it. And there is the chase cam. Obviously, obviously, this is the most arcadish view out of all of them. It's the one that is furthest from simulation but you know Gran Turismo is more of a, a sim K than a full-on simulation if you are looking for that immersion and that simulation cockpit cam is the way to go now obviously there's a couple of differences from bonnet or bumper cam in this view one there is no virtual mirror at the top two the radar is situated on the bottom right rather than in the middle because you actually have the display of the car in front of you but the worst thing is is that it's so difficult this is the i know that's just sort of the easy thing to say but this is the hardest view to drive in you have the least amount of information on the screen and you're pigeonholed into this windscreen view as well you have less you have less space to look at you have less track to look at than you do in the bumper or the hood or the chase cam there's just less going on and you have to trust your instincts and you have to trust the drivers around you more which you know in online racing doesn't really end that well too often now what you can do like the chase cam is you can change how the camera sits on the inside of the car you can raise it higher or lower depending on what you like and you can go forward and you can go back as far as you like Obviously, like the bumper cam, you can't see where the front of your car is, but obviously, like I said before, maybe you just take practice and you get to know how long the nose is of your car so you can get as close to the car in front of you as possible. Now, that is all of the cameras talked about, and I'm just going to talk now about some of the other things that might influence what a driver chooses as their camera. Obviously, 
First of all, I've said it a couple of times, it's personal preference. And a couple of things that affect personal preference is what the individual driver wants from the game, firstly, and then what what they're comfortable with, what they're using, what is, what's the equipment that they're using as well. But even with the equipment part of this, it doesn't really matter. It just matters what you are comfortable doing. I've already said that some of the faster people use chase cam with a steering wheel. You know, the rumors about when Lewis Hamilton did his time trial challenge, he did chase cam on a steering wheel. It's whatever you are comfortable with. So, for example, if you want to be fast, you're probably going to use either bumper cam or hood cam. Simple. They're the views that have the most information on screen to help you be fast and drive effectively. Now, the final part of this video, it might just seem like I am preaching cockpit. And for those of you who have been following my story, my journey, my development over the last year and a half, you will know that I've gone from playing uh, controller and chase cam onto a steering wheel. I've just got a Thrustmaster T300 RS because, you know, the RS makes a difference. And just while I talk about this, this race in the background on your screen now is from the live stream the other day. It was so much fun. This is why I bought a steering wheel. I am looking for immersion. I'm not trying to be fast. I am looking for immersion. And it's races like this that is why we are sim racers. Is that's, that's why we're looking for it. Once again, it's down to personal preference what view you use. If you don't have a steering wheel, the probability of you using cockpit is not going to be high because it's very hard to get those kind of immersion levels from using a controller. So there we go. All in all, at the end of it all, it is down to your personal preference. Hopefully I have highlighted a couple of things over this video that you didn't know. Maybe you didn't know that you could tweak the uh, chase cam and the cockpit view. Maybe you didn't know about the shading of the bumper cam. But the last thing I will say is do what you want. Do what you like and make sure you're choosing a camera view that suits your goals within the game. Are you wanting to go fast? Are you looking for immersion? Do you just want to piss around and drive it like an arcade? It's up to you. Once again, let me know what view you use in the comment section below and why you use it, most of all. That's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, all of that good stuff. Thank you to the channel members for doing what you do and supporting the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.